I'm convinced Kyle Shanahan is going to get it right. And look, Danny gave me some chops busting in the last show because of that. He told me, look, man, you got way too much faith in Shanahan's ability to turn a young quarterback into something special because he hasn't really picked and then groomed the guy before. He's groomed quarterbacks. He made Matt Schaub, who the Texans traded for in 2007, a pretty good quarterback. He was his quarterback coach in 2007, 2008, 2009. He was the offensive coordinator. The Texans, for what it's worth, however irrelevant they might have been during that time, sure put up a whole lot of passing yards. And Matt Schaub led the NFL in passing in 2009 before Kyle Shanahan moved elsewhere. Kyle Shanahan was hands-on with Robert Griffin III as his offensive coordinator with Washington football team in 2012. That situation didn't work out because our Robert Griffin III got hurt, but, I mean, he looked really good in that season. Matt Ryan had an incredible 2017 season where he wins the NFL MVP. It hasn't been the same since. It wasn't the same with Steve Sarkeesian when he came in to the mix. He is a guy who has been able to maximize the quarterbacks that are handed to him, and Jimmy Garoppolo, he got him to a Super Bowl. Yes, in spite of only seven passes in the NFC Championship game. Of all the coaches that I have seen across the NFL, it does feel like Kyle Shanahan is the one coach you could potentially make the strongest case for being quarterback proof, which is an insane thing to say because every single team needs to have a plus quarterback in this league. But trading up to that number three spot for – Pick number three at quarterback. It does feel like there could be five quarterbacks taken in the top ten with the way that teams seem to be angling for those top ten picks and guys like Zach Wilson or, after Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, whose name hasn't really been mentioned a whole lot, or it's Trey Lance from North Dakota State, or it's Mac Jones from Alabama. I feel like if Kyle Shanahan is given any of those guys, he's going to make the most out of them. And he's got a roster structure already in place that I think is probably the NFC West's best. They have one of the best pass rushers in Nick Bosa. They have one of the best linebackers in Fred Warner. They have defensive pieces around that played very well last season despite a lot of injuries. They are tough on that side of the football. And on offense, Brandon Ayuk going into his second year, which is the year that wide receivers tend to make their biggest jump. Debo Samuel, who had a, his sophomore year somewhat – neutralized by injuries, though he was out there. And, of course, George Kittle and a running game that seems to work with whoever they put under, uh, they put behind the quarterback. I feel pretty good about San Francisco trading into that number three spot. And it has me wondering just about the Seahawks, who have, after an aggressive offseason last year where they tried to transform their defense, seen two teams go and try to transform their offense, either in the short term with, Matt Stafford over Jared Goff in, in L.A. or in San Francisco with now Jimmy Garoppolo, who at least they're saying right now is going to be the quarterback for this coming season, and perhaps the heir apparent waiting in the wings with who they take at number three overall. I'm Paul Gallant. This is the most interactive sports talk show in Seattle and Washington. Nay, the world. 710-710 on the Vizzy Hard Seltzer text line. Is this Bay Area Sports Radio? Lots of Jimmy G over the last few hours. Well, listen. The 49ers are what? The Seahawks' biggest rival? The 49ers made a move to get the number three overall pick. And the 49ers are a team that I feel like you should be concerned about getting the number three overall pick. 710-710 on the busy hard seltzer text line. Paul, if you want to really be accepted by your listeners, you need to get off your 49er wagon. It doesn't sit well with any of us. You just cover this team, though. Most of us love this team. I guess you didn't have division rivals in New England, but do some research. We hate the 49ers and their fan base. They disgust us. Come on, Paul, get with it. I'm looking at this situation objectively, guys, and I will look at it with the objective lens that maybe you guys can't see it with. The 49ers team is really good. You think they're not? Because you don't like them? That's flawed logic. After all, this team did get to a Super Bowl just two years ago with Jimmy Garoppolo under center. This isn't me saying I'm rooting for the 49ers. This is me saying that they have a better roster than you top to bottom. They do right now. 
you have the better quarterback, which is the great equalizer in all of that. But there, now there is a chance, either at some point this coming season or next year, where the 49ers are closer to you in that conversation. And the Rams are already closer to you in that conversation. And that's what's most concerning about this entire thing, is that now you can't look at those other quarterbacks in the division, any of them, and sneer. Because I do trust what Kyle Shanahan eventually will do with said young whippersnapper quarterback. A lot of reaction to the idea that I'm a traitor. I am a secret closet. I can't even look at you. San Francisco 49er fan. Well, I'm sorry, Mora. I'm sorry that I am coming off that way. I don't know how I'm coming off that way. A text. Paul, stop with the 49er talk. We don't care if they are good. The problem is you sound gleeful about their potential success. Read the room, Houston boy. I always get amused when someone identifies me with the city. I don't even know where I'm from anymore. You know, I like to think I'm from Seattle now, but I've only been here a year and a half. I've lived in so many places. I'm just a nomad wandering around the country like that song by Dion from back in the day. Um, I don't understand how I sound gleeful. This is supposed to be me sounding worried or concerned. Because I am worried and concerned that San Francisco now has the ability, potentially not just for this season, but for years to come, have a quarterback that's on par with yours, who supposedly isn't that thrilled about being here, while the Rams also bring in Matt Stafford.